Hi, welcome to Mathematics of Chemistry Part 3. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to talk about calculations with significant figures. Specifically, we're going to look at the general idea of doing calculations and considering significant figures, adding and subtracting significant figures, a little bit of practice to reinforce this concept, multiplying and dividing significant figures, and a little practice to reinforce that too. So let's talk about calculations and significant figures. Understanding how to work with significant figures assures that the final answer that we get from our calculations is not more precise than the initial given numbers. So the basic idea here is that for any mathematical calculation, the final answer should not be more precise, should not be more precise than the least precise measurement in the problem. What does that mean? It means when you're looking at your numbers, you have to think about what you have. How many decimal places? How many significant figures? You can't have an answer that goes out more decimal places or is more precise than your least precise measurement. So these are things that we really need to pay attention to as we're going through and working with numbers in chemistry. So in general, there's two different methods for determining significant figures. We're going to look at how to add and subtract significant figures, and then we're going to look at how to multiply and divide significant figures. Adding and subtracting significant figures. When two measurements are added or subtracted, the answer should contain as many decimal places as the measurement with the smaller number of decimal places. In other words, your least precise measurement. Now this particular rule where we're going to basically line up our numbers so the ones are in the same column and the tenths are in the same column and the hundredths are in the same column. This technique is going to apply just to adding and subtracting significant figures. So step one, line up the decimal points. Step two, identify which number is the most precise. In other words, if you have a decimal, goes out the greatest number of decimal places. Then we need to identify the number which is the least precise. Again, if we do have decimals, it's the one that goes out the fewest decimal places. Then we want to determine the number of decimal places the final answer will contain. And remember, the key thing here is your answer can only be as precise as the least precise answer. So what does this look like? Let's look at this example right here. We have 8.11 plus 2.476. Now the 8.11 is the least precise measurement because it's only going out two decimal places. On the other hand, the 2.476 is the most precise because it's going out three decimal places. So if we added this up or if we put it into our calculator, we get 10.586. Now, Again, we can only go out two decimal places. So this is going out one decimal place, two decimal places. So we can only go out this far, which means that we have to look at this six right here and round up. So our final answer here is going to be 10.59. Because again, since my least precise measurement only goes out two decimal places, my final answer can only go out two decimal places. Let's look at a situation where we're subtracting. 40.3 minus 1.6954. We look at this again and we realize the 40.3 is the least precise measurement because it's only going out one decimal place. The 1.6954 is the most precise measurement because it's going out four decimal places. So if we were to put this into a calculator and get an answer, we get 38.6046. Again, our answer can only go out one decimal place. So therefore, uh, because this is a zero, we're going to round down and our answer will be 38.6. Now what I'd like you to do is stop, try these practice problems, see how you do, and then we'll check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. In this first one, we have 0 .008 plus 0.05. When we add those together, we get 0 0.058. We can only go out two decimal places, so that means we have to cut it off right here. We need to round up, so our final answer is going to be 0 0.06. Let's look at our next example. 
200 point minus 87.3. With this answer, because of the decimal point, we're going to be going to the ones position. So if I subtract this in my calculator, I'm going to get 112.7. I'm going to round up the seven, and then my final answer will be 113. Let's look at our next question. 67.5 plus .009. If we put that into our calculator, we'll get 67.509. Again, we're going to look at our numbers. We're going to see that there is a zero after the five. It goes out one decimal place. So that means our final answer is going to be 67.5. 22.4420 plus 56.981. When we add these two together, we're going to get 79.4230. Our least precise number goes out three decimal places. So if we look at three decimal places, we would cut it off right here. We just have a zero, so our final answer will be 79.423. Our next example is 84.675 minus three. If we subtract this, we're going to get 81 0.675. In this situation, we're only going to go to the ones position, so we're going to take this six, round it up, and get 82. 75 minus 2.55. If we put that into our calculator, we get 72.45. The 75 only goes to the ones position, so we're going to look at the 72, and then the decimal, the four following, we're going to round down, and we're going to get 72. 10.0 minus 9.9. .9. When we subtract those two out, we're going to get 0 0.1. We already have our answer in the ones position, so we don't have to do anything here. 17.951 plus 32.45. If we add these two numbers together, we get 50.401. Again, our least precise number is going out two decimal places. So I'm going to basically round down after the one. So it's just gonna be 50.40. And we want to keep the zero there. The zero is important, it is significant, it is a placeholder, so we need to keep it there. 71.86 minus 13.1. When we subtract these two numbers, we'll get 58.76. Uh, the 13.1 only goes out one decimal place. So we're going to take the six, we're going to round it up, we're gonna get 58.8. Finally, 3.7 plus 2.97. When we add these together, we'll get 6.67. The 3.7 only goes out one decimal place, so again, we're going to look at that seven, we're going to round up, and we're going to get 6.7. Now let's talk about multiplying and dividing significant figures. What you need to know about multiplying and dividing significant figures is that the rule is different than adding and subtracting. While adding and subtracting is all about lining up the decimal points, Multiplying and dividing is more at looking at our numbers and figuring out how many significant numbers each one contains, and that is going to drive our final answer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to count the number of significant figures in each given number. Then we're going to either multiply or divide the numbers as directed, and then our final answer should not contain more significant figures that are present in the number having the fewest significant figures. So basically, what we're going to do here, we're going to look at each number and figure out how many significant figures does it contain. So 32.24 has four significant figures. 2.6 has two significant figures. 1.1414 has five significant figures. When I multiply these all together, I get 95.6767. Based on my numbers right here, my answer can only contain two significant figures. So I'm going to keep my two highest ones and then basically round from there. So I'm going to have 95. I look at the six right here, which means I'm going to round up. So my final answer is going to be 96. Let's look at this situation. I have 130. The 130 does not have a decimal point, so this is two significant figures. 9.4 has two significant figures. So therefore, my final answer is also going to contain two significant figures. When I divide this out, I get 13.82978. That's nice, but I still only can have two significant figures. So I'm going to keep the 13, I'm going to look at the eight, I'm going to round up, so my final answer is 14. Now again, what I'd like you to do is stop, 
do some practice, and then we'll check your work. Welcome back. Let's look at our first one. 200, which has one significant figure. 3.58, which has three significant figures. So if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 716. I can only have one significant figure. So my final answer is 700. 13.7 has three significant figures. 2.5 has two significant figures. When I multiply this one out, I get 34.25. My answer can only have two significant figures. I'm going to round down. My answer will be 34. Uh, 0 0.00003, that has one significant figure. 7 to 7 has three significant figures. I multiply this one out. I can only have one significant figure. So this is my first significant figure. So therefore my answer is just going to be 0 0.02. This number has four significant figures, uh, four significant figures again. If I divide these out, I'm going to get this big long number right here, but my answer can only have four significant figures. So I'm going to look at the last number or the number after the decimal. It's less than five, so I'm gonna round down. So my answer will be 1,323. 89 has two significant figures. 9.0, because the decimal's present, has two significant figures. I divide those out and I get 9.88, which means I'm going to keep the nine, I'm gonna keep the eight, I'm going to round the eight up, 9.9. .9. 5,000 has one significant figure. 55 has two significant figures. So when I divide these out, I get 90.909. I can only have one significant figure, therefore my final answer will be 90. Let's look at our next example. 50.0 is going to have three significant figures. 2.00 is going to have three significant figures. So when I multiply this out, I get 25.0, which is three significant figures. So that's my final answer. Uh, 2.3 is two significant figures. 3.45 is three significant figures. 7.42 is three significant figures. Therefore, I multiply this out and I can only have two significant figures, so I'm going to have to round the eight up, and I'm going to get 59. 1.0007 is five significant figures. 0 0.009 is only one significant figure, so if I multiply these together, I get this number, uh, which is 0 0.009, which means I can only have one significant figure, so I'm gonna to have to drop the zero and that is important. I, I need to recognize that that zero is significant because of the decimal, and I do need to drop it from my answer. 51 is two significant figures. Seven is one significant figure. So this is 7.2857 if I put it in my calculator, but my final answer will only be seven. 208 is three significant figures. 9.0 is two significant figures. I'm going to divide this out. I'll get 23.111. I can only have two significant figures, so I'm going to keep the 23. Therefore, my answer is 23. Point zero zero 0.003 is one significant figure. The five is one significant figure. Point zero 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 0.0006, which is only one significant figure. So hey, it's the same thing. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We went over the general reasoning for calculations with significant figures. We talked about adding and subtracting significant figures, a little bit of practice, multiplying and dividing significant figures, and then finally a little more practice at the end. Need more help? Please feel free to contact me. Have a great day.